Unspoiled Network podcast. This is Unspoiled, covering The Maid and the Crocodile. Part 5, chapters 28, 29, and 30. In these chapters, the penny finally drops. <laughs> well, I say that. It makes it sound like she figured it out, but really, he just tells her. And there's actually a reconciliation also, which was lovely to see. Welcome to Unspoiled. Akabiole! Akabiole! Welcome to the show, everyone. I am Natasha. I'm Rashawn. To be clear, when I say there's a reconciliation, I don't mean between her and the crocodile. I, <laughs> I meant between Yin and and uh, Dele. But, you know, whatever. Take what we can get here. It's we fine. We sure will. <laughs> um, so g- give me your thoughts on these chapters off the top. Um, I loved how the sacrifice girl story and ended up panning out. Um, it was very quick, but I really enjoyed it. And, uh, we, it's so funny too, because, uh, one of our listeners, I forget who it was, had mentioned the thing about the naming convention of how mothers get new names once they have children. Yes. And, um, then we, then the book actually explicitly addresses that in this, Mm -hmm. in these chapters. So, um, I was, and then the, of course, you know, the woman choosing to name her, her child, um, Sade. So we get a new mama Sade. And, um, I just thought that was really, really sweet. And, uh, then the end of the chapters where she finally opens one of his messages, one of his gourd grams Mm -hmm. and, uh, then does the thing that of course she does, which is like the opposite of what he says, don't come back. And she goes marching back. (laughs) She literally (laughs) says, don't tell me what to do. (laughs) Which honestly, a part of me was like, are you not just kind of falling right into his hands here? Because I feel like he knows her well enough that he should be aware. That's exactly how she'll react. Mm-hmm. Like, is he doing this on purpose? You know, it's funny that you mentioned that because I actually think that he's doing that thing where it's like, don't look at me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm a hideous monster. Don't look at me. <laughs> just the, the tone of voice that you said that in. I just pictured you thrusting your hands out and turning your face away. That's what I did. Wearing, like, you That's... were wearing that like pirate shirt from Seinfeld. That's and ex- there was like a candelabra <laughs> You. <laughs> there's a what i did was the um from since you brought up seinfeld first i that i don't feel bad about making a reference <laughs> where um kramer has been smoking turned his apartment into a smoking lounge and he gets all this like skin damage from excessive smoke in his apartment and cherry is like what happened to your face you look like a beat up catcher's mitt the camera goes oh my god don't, don't look at me look away i'm hideous <laughs> i'm hideous <laughs> <laughs> oh god uh, but, anyway um, yeah so but but so, to, but to your point about the crocodile really quick i think that he is not necessarily like consciously baiting her to come back like when he says don't come back it's because he's changed you know even more Mm. so into into like this beast and so he i think he really does mean it but i think there's a, a another part another layer down inside where he knows that she will come so it's not so much that i think he's like manipulating her like, oh, I'm going to tell her not to come because I know that'll piss her off and she'll come running. Um, I think he's, I think he means it. But I also think there's a part of him deep down inside that is like, I, I hope she comes anyway. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I, I was also kind of, the fact that as they she's basically telling him who the fuck he is before she walks out, he seems to be transforming more rapidly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't know what this means 
Well, what is it? What is it about her either being fond of him or her proximity that is holding the transformation more at bay? Do you think? Um, I that's a really really interesting uh, thing to consider. If her being around him, well, because he had used all this magic right before they have their moment because he, he he was floating shit around the, the whole time the woman was there having the baby he was you know mm-hmm. doing using a lot of magic in that short period of time but um but the idea that her proximity to him is somehow imbuing him with the resistance to the other magic is is a really fascinating idea i don't know how that would actually work but there's still a lot about small Sade and her magic that I don't feel like we really fully understand. Yeah, definitely. So it's hard because we don't have a good grasp on what her magic is exactly. We still haven't, we haven't, re- we returned to the tapestry really in chapters now. It's been a minute since there's been any conversation about why she was on that tapestry and what it is about her that can save him. So mm-hmm. it's possible that it will turn out to be that maybe it's something about her being near him, you know, because mm. uh, that's still so in the dark. Yeah. Uh, and we're running out of time, so they need to fucking tell me something. I know. We're so close to, like, there's one episode of coverage left. Is that it? That's it. <gasps> Shut the front door. Yeah. Well, I was checking today and I was just like, wait, how much is she going to be fitting into this? Like at the very end, it just felt so, uh, it feels so like unfinished that I'm sort of concerned that the last section is going to be too packed with stuff because oh. it's just 31 through 33. That's it. And that's the end of the book. Shit. So, yeah. and what do we don't, I don't know how much like if this is a, a standalone book or is there like I'm pretty sure it's standalone. Well then she she's going to the last few chapters are going to do a lot of heavy lifting. I hope this she is what fucking I'm saying. pulls it off. Mm, I'm a little nervous. Yeah, exactly. Oh, boy. Exactly. I mean, she did really well with the first two books, so I trust her, but I'm getting a little you guys, I'm getting a little nervous. <laughs> what if she doesn't stick the landing? Yeah, I really want, I feel like if I had read ahead, I may have split up the end into more sections. If I had, if I, if it goes like I'm expecting it to, which is to say everything kind of packed into those last three chapters, it might feel like it's maybe too much for us to talk about in one episode, Hmm. but I haven't read ahead. So I don't want to make that call right now i guess after this episode you can read ahead and then let us know for next week just how many we're going to do like yeah i guess so. i'll wait to read ahead until you have an opportunity that way in case you decide to sp- split it okay yeah yeah yeah. so i'll just wait let you jump ahead all right that works um so okay let's let's get started into these actual chapters so uh when this girl gets thrown in as a sacrifice. She is still screaming. She comes at in the hot. people behind her. Yeah. <laughs> I may be the sacrifice, but you will always be the failure. You will always be the man who killed his own child and failed to make its mother love you. Always, always. Uh, I'm here for it. <laughs> and this bitch is in labor. It's unclear if they knew she was going into labor and threw her in here because of that or whether she has gone into labor because of the stress of what they're doing to her. But it doesn't really matter. Um, this story, though, that she tells is so similar to Sade's mother's story, mm-hmm. which is because it's a it's very so common fucking common. story. Indeed. Yep. Yep. I mean, like, did I don't know if we talked about it, if you mentioned the statistic in the last episode or or earlier episode, rather, when it came up, we got the story about Mama Shade and, and Shade, Small Shade's origin story, or if I just imagined it. But that, you know, that statistic about how the most dangerous time for a woman is when she's pregnant. Mm-hmm. Like, that is so 
damning. Yeah. For those who aren't aware, it's not because of the pregnancy. Yeah, right? <laughs> it's because of the fathers and their tendency to want to get rid of a problem by murdering it. Yep. <sighs> Murder is a solution. Yeah, it's, um, it's, I think it, like, for a while, it was like the number one cause of death of pregnant women was homicide. I can't remember if that is still true. But it is the fact that that was ever even close enough to true to be like believed is so upsetting. It's just, you guys, this is why we need to have reproductive rights because the ways in which women are controlled via pregnancy, there are so many varied ways to do it. It is the, the, the men can get really imaginative and yet then they just don't want to deal with it. They're going to try and force us to carry children mm -hmm. that they don't want so mm -hmm. much that they would rather we be dead. Yep. But they also want to trap us. Uh huh. Which is such a weird thing. Like, and that's what's happening. I'm looking in this at story. you, offset. <laughs> <laughs> expecting that at all <laughs> <laughs> I was <laughs> oh, yeah. for, for, for some context everybody you want to give us a little context Natasha yeah I'm so sorry <laughs> uh, Cardi B female rapper and noted online whiner is <laughs> in this really garbage relationship with a man that she basically like argued into marrying her like he didn't want to and they had a fight that day about it and he just said like okay fine and like got her a ring later that day and she has had his children but the man has cheated on her a billion times mm -hmm. and so recently while pregnant again with this man's child for god knows what fucking reason she found out he had cheated another time and she was like bet and she went out and fucked some other man while pregnant with his child and everybody is like i can't believe she'd fuck another this man's wife is pregnant with his baby and he's fucking around but nobody has that energy for him oh no but they are incensed that she would let a, let let a foreign dick in her while she's carrying this other Deeply. man like they like in their imagination offset's baby was in there like ow ow <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't hurt when it's my daddy's dick it only hurts when it's stranger dick so everybody has flipped out like on her about this and he came up in her fucking comments the other day mm -hmm. when she was she had like made some she has this habit of posting videos where she is ranting and she lets herself get very bothered by like nobody's this woman has so much money just go away Argue just go live and be rich right. yeah <laughs> it's like if me if i like with my current personality but i had like astronomically more money i can guarantee you guys i would not be up to that shit that Listen, i am up to currently the were way, i rich like she is the way i would completely disappear if i had you money. would never see me again <laughs> never see me again you i would you send you all checks don't get me wrong i will share the money I'm not interested in actual interaction. <laughs> but yeah, he came into her comments on one of those videos and he posted, and I quote, you, my baby mama. So I won. Oh, it's so gross. Mm -hmm. Just hearing it out loud is such a gross, like whose mind works like that? Yep. Bum ass dudes. That's who. Indeed. Dudes is not the word Rashawn was about to say. It's, not. <laughs> it's really not. <laughs> uh, it's really not. But I had to remember where I was, <laughs> and you know the context of our particular situation and the dynamic here. And so you know I refrain. But you are mm. correct, ma'am. <laughs> not the word. <laughs> I'm like, mm, she said, "Dude" with a hard R. <laughs> 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 oh, Jesus um, Christ. so 
anyway, I'm sorry. Back to, back to this lady who is similarly like he wants to impregnate her so that he can have control over her, but he doesn't want actually anything to do with her. And once mm-hmm. he starts to realize this is a classic too, a man wants to get his woman pregnant because she's spending too much time doing her own things that she cares about and loves and spending time with her own family. Yep. And so the guy impregnates her to make it so that she is more restricted in her overall movements, very literally, but also figuratively. And they think this means I will get all the attention now, failing to understand that actually pregnant women need more attention. Yep. And then a baby And comes, then there will be a baby. And yeah. you'll get no attention whatsoever. And to be clear, when we're talking about the situation in the book, he, this woman is under the impression that both her and this man are taking precautions to prevent pregnancy. And yes. he willfully goes behind her back and stops holding up his end of the bargain and stops taking his particular herbs that he's supposed to take or tea or whatever it is that he's supposed to be drinking. And that's how she ends up pregnant. Yeah. Which in and of it, that act in and of itself, when you have an understanding with somebody that we're both supposed to be responsible for not getting a pregnancy. And then you go behind my back and make it so that I can in fact get pregnant. That's like, trapping that's that's trapping. rape basically it, 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 look, it's yeah. sex under under false, false pre- pretenses mm-hmm. like yeah it's like people who put i don't like you know fuck with condoms and put pins in them pinholes in them and mm-hmm. all that kind of shit it's like that or stealthing dudes who like slip the condom off oh, after they've started God. having sex yes yeah. what is wrong Mm. And I know I can already hear somebody out there being like, well, women lie about being on birth control all the time. I mean, true. It's true. They do. Everybody, everybody sucks. But men, when they lie and get a woman pregnant, they can just leave. Mm -hmm. Women, they don't get to do that part. So it's notably different. Just on that sense. Yep. It doesn't, the trap doesn't work for the woman. The way, even though the the popular narrative is that women trap men with pregnancies, the trap doesn't work because to your point, they just fucking leave anyway. Yeah. So. (laughs) Yep. So this dude got her pregnant, started to beat her because now he has her. And when she like, you know, talks about how he got her pregnant and he's the father and yada, yada, then he tries to say, it's not his baby at all. Yeah. It's actually that she like seduced him because she's a witch. Mm-hmm. And just the whole thing is so, and she says something like, I don't know why they believed him over me, yeah. except that I was an immigrant girl. Yeah. I and- was a foreigner, the migrant whore here to take their jobs and their flats and their men. So everybody looked at her as an other and couldn't wait to believe his side of the story. And the reason that the neighbors become involved is because he has beaten her a couple of different times when she tries to leave. And when she realizes that she's pregnant, she decides to leave in the middle of the day, no more sneaking out in the middle of the night. And she Mm -hmm. goes out into the street and is like, look what he's done. You know, uh, And that's when he tells everybody, no, I didn't do anything at all. She's a witch. She, she trapped me. She tempted me and got pregnant by some stranger. And she's trying to pass it off as my baby, like to save face with the neighbors. Cause she is a woman that is like kind of about that action. Yeah. I really do enjoy that, that she's just like, yeah, you know, going to come out here and, and call him out. Unfortunately, it doesn't go well for her, but I respect it. Yeah. And so the whole town rallies behind this man and they tie her up and carry her through the town to throw her into the crocodile house. Um, yep. And that's that's how that's what's happening when the chapter opens. That's why she's giving them the business. And she and she shows up in Bikina House. <laughs> yeah, this uh this like the fact that she is brought here 
he has dealt with women being sacrificed this whole time, but clearly the fact that she is pregnant and that she is in labor, especially flummoxes mm-hmm. him completely. Yeah. So he is literally standing there mouth agape, yeah. like a fucking Useless. fish. <laughs> and it has to be Shade who, who starts to actually get shit together. Um, I keep wanting to call her Tarasai. I still am wanting to call her Tarasai, like all the time. Small Shade, you mean? Yeah. Call her Tarasai. <laughs> yep. Um, and of course, like, let's all remember that this man's starting to transform even more. So he is looking straight up alarming yeah. at this point. Yeah. He has this, like, pointed teeth and he's got a lot more scales on him. And just overall, his his countenance isn't comforting to a woman in labor i would imagine yeah he um what does she say when she looks at him she says when uh she comes into the house she says something to both of them she's like oh oh away from me nameless god you shall not have my child yes <laughs> and she starts praying and like you know from death birth to soil if you touch me may the queen mother of earth swallow you up may her fingers rise in roots and grind you to the ground (laughs) that is amazing (laughs) it's really good (laughs) Uh, like as far as curses go may her roots rise up and grind you to the ground it's pretty fucking good right Oof, love it love it (laughs) um so, yeah, so Small Shot A uh, takes control of the situation and goes over to the woman and tries to tell her to relax, tells her that um, the crocodile is harmless, says, um, you know, I'm here to help you. This is a safe place and um, introduces herself and she takes the woman to her own room and gets her comfortable. And the woman's name is Quabina and uh, Small Shot A recognizes the name and the region that it's from um and it's a realm that's neighboring olawan and uh we find her backstory while she's in the middle of labor um she tells shade all of the stuff about what happened to her and um about how this man that got her pregnant alienated her from her sister because he was threatened by their closeness in their relationship which is another thing that they do as well right yeah um it's not just about having you and having control of you but they have to sort of they have to they have to keep you in a box for when they want you like yeah, a toy yeah yeah and they mm-hmm. have to sort of alienate you from everybody that could be a support system or anyone that gets in the way anyone that takes your attention off of them because they are just giant babies i was actually talking about this with owen a couple of weeks ago that like you know, it's one of those things that as you get older, you start to look back at things with your parents and it's not just the way that they treated you, but realizing like the way that they were with each other that was so fucked up. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just thinking about how, when they got married, my mother was 16 years old and my father was 28. Wow. Which is already like, every time you tell me that I'm just like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. And then after they got married before she was pregnant, I think he removed the phone line from the house so that she couldn't call her family because he was getting jealous of her talking to them. Mm. And so she was like utterly isolated except when she like went grocery shopping and stuff. And even that it was like, yeah, that's so sad. And like, obviously my dad grew a lot through you know over time in some ways more than others but uh thinking back to that and how utterly controlling he was it is not surprising that he went for a 16 year old those things though yeah. they're not accidentally coinciding that's how that works it's 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 weird hearing about like my mom was telling me a story about she doesn't talk a lot about like being married to my father um, but like she'll share little bits and pieces here and there. She was telling me about their wedding. Their wedding day always makes me laugh because it was just such a shit show of a day. <laughs> like they were so late. Uh, my mom was late. Uh, the 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 guy that came to marry them at the house like had to leave and go to another function he had because they were so late and come back later. And um, by the time everything was said, and then they got married like at my aunt's house, like inside my aunt's apartment. 
and then they got married. They had the little like party at the house. And then my dad's friends and brother-in-law and like his, his homeboys took him out. And my mom didn't see him for like two days. Oh my God. Like, they, they went like, they went out on a bender. <laughs> Jesus. That's supposed to be before the wedding. If you do it at all, which I would rather you did not, but yeah. <laughs> Christ. I yeah, my just... dad was late to the wedding. My mom was there, but he was late because he was uh, he was plowing snow for people with his snow plow. Oh, and that really sums my dad up quite well because he was somebody who was incredibly generous with everybody else, but his own family, he was very stingy mm. in a lot of ways. He just did not prioritize us. And I think a lot of it was just wanting to be seen as a good guy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. To the outside. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so Small Sade is, is like trying to comfort this woman. And she's like, you know, you're safe here. And I'm going to do anything I can to help. But like, I'm not really qualified for this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Maybe I can find somebody for you. And uh, she is like, no, absolutely not. No one can know that I'm alive. Like, let them all think that they threw me to death. Yeah. And I do have a sister. That's where I was going when I was leaving my husband. Um, And when Sade is like, well, I can go get to, I can go, I can go to her. And, um, I just said her name. Quabina is like, please don't leave me alone. Just stay here with yeah. me. Um, because I don't want to be left here. Uh, and she gestures kind of like that, whatever that is outside. Meaning crocodile. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm not mad at that. So Sade is just like, all right, crack knuckles. I guess we're doing this. <laughs> <then."> <laughs> yeah, that's about it. And uh, again, she tells the story. And um, she asked Quabina, do you mind if I sing? And so while she's in labor, Small Sade starts cleaning the spirit soap from her own room and from herself, which she had, and she does in this chapter, she reminds us that she um, has never done that before. I was a little confused by this because I thought that it had been mentioned Bikina House doesn't have spirit soap. Um. It, it has been, it has been, uh, like the house itself. But I think Small Sade carries her own with her. So it hasn't had it because there weren't enough people living in it. Exactly. Basically? Exactly. Basically. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. That, that's what I took from it. Yeah. I thought that it was like you know immune. It, nothing sticks here because the house is magic oh, and gotcha. things are weird. But that makes sense. Um. But uh, she has decided that even though, in her words, she's resigned herself to sleeping beneath all of this, which she calls the world's expectations, she's she's damned if she would let a new soul be smothered by it. So she goes on this cleaning bent that is really, really intense. Yeah. Um, and she describes, again, the dip, various types of silt that are all around. And it is... Um, really affecting when you think about who we know small shot a to be and seeing the type of silt that's around. Um, and there's one that she finds, uh, that really struck me. Um, apathy Ivy. Yeah. Whispering tendrils that bid souls to know your place, to stop trying to accept your lot. And she rips it down with her bare hands and then there's another part where she finds one little tiny, tiny joy moth, a little thing, and she sings it till it's triple its size, till it's huge and fills the room uh, with golden wings. And I thought that was really lovely. Yeah. Um, and that is what this baby is born into. Um, it says when she gave birth to a perfect tiny girl, her healthy cries rose to match the joy moth song and pitch as though celebrating her own fearless journey to being alive. And I thought that was just lovely. Yeah. Yeah. I was, um, 
just there was something really like touching about her being there for somebody who is in such a similar position to her mother. Yes. And the fact that like she could make a difference here in such a profound way. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not her job or anything yeah. to like make up for the past. You gotta be careful about that stuff. Yeah. But uh but it was this woman is so discarded. Mm -hmm. in such a similar like literally cast out the way that her mother was mm -hmm. into an enchanted place that is unknown and potentially dangerous yeah the only difference is that this woman isn't like on the verge of death from a what was it that her, her mother had like pneumonia or something like that tuberculosis um, possibly. yeah something yeah um but going into labor pretty close <laughs> I love too that Small Shade makes the connection. Like she is aware of of what of the parallels to her mm -hmm. own story. And there's a moment where the baby goes and like kind of reaches for her prayer pebble, which she's now wearing around her neck. Ugh. And she realizes like when she sees the baby go for it, she's just like, Oh no, you can't touch that. You know, you'll hurt yourself. And then this connection happens in her brain and she realizes that she's been cutting her mouth and hurting herself since she was a very young girl. And she realizes that it doesn't matter. There's no good reason ever for a child to, to hurt that way that there's no way that this baby could ever deserve that. And, and mm -hmm. so there's no way that she could ever have deserved that. It doesn't matter how low born the mother was or how base the father was. It doesn't matter how many mistakes she's made or how many times she said no. That she always deserved to be housed, clothed, fed, and taught to imagine a better world for herself and everyone in it always. Yeah. And at that moment, she takes the prayer pebble from her neck and just throws it, throws it away. This is something that I have talked to you about, just the idea of like, especially when it comes to taking care of your body, imagining your body as a separate entity that is a child mm -hmm. and whether you would do the things to it that you do mm -hmm. if it were a child that is wholly dependent on you to make the choices for it. And I do this in, in context for me of, you know, a world that has us as women, especially believing that our bodies are our enemies mm -hmm. and that our bodies are not to be trusted, that we're going to want things that are bad for us. And that the, like everything that your body's like all of your urges of any kind, whether they be like sexual or in terms of food or whatever, all of that is, is fundamentally harmful to you and you have to learn to fight against it at all times and it creates this terrible disconnect with our bodies and this mistrust. And we begin to see our body as a separate entity, but as something working against us. Yeah, as an you adversary. Know? Yeah. And really, the, our body is helpless to our choices. And it is doing its best all the time to make the best of whatever garbage we're feeding it or saying to it. Mm -hmm. It's trying to do its best despite our bullshit. And so the idea that our bodies are enemy, it's actually like the opposite, you know? And it makes so much sense here that she is not able to like see how she doesn't clean the place until it's a baby that's being threatened with being smothered by all of this silt. Mm -hmm. She won't do it for herself even though that shit's still there, she yep. just lives with it because yep. that's what she deserves. Yep. An infant comes in and all of a sudden this is unacceptable. I can't leave it like this. And then the same thing with the stone. And that is just, it's, that's the exact thing that I'm talking about. It's just like, we understand with others and especially mm -hmm. children, how, how much they depend on our judgment and how much they trust us to make the right choices for them. And we still like get mad when things don't go right, even though we have given 
this poor body no tools. Mm -hmm. You know, we have done nothing to earn what we're wishing we had. And obviously this is me talking in generalities because there are plenty of other issues that have nothing to do with the way we are behaving. But the, the way that she just, it feels like, you know, somebody just poked her right between the eyes and she suddenly realizes the, the like kind of hideousness of the, the prayer pebble and what she was doing with it in a way that the crocodile saw way back Mm -hmm. and tried to make her give up. And even then she tried to like rationalize why it's not that bad. I don't even use it all the time. I only do it when I'm really upset, Mm -hmm. you know, like, and it's not even as jagged as the other one was. This is, this this rock is only a little bit pointy. (laughs) Yep. It's all just self harm comes in many forms. We have, a fundamental problem with loving ourselves in our current society Mm -hmm. you know uh and i know it sounds like really corny to say but we really do we don't like there's so much individual self-loathing because for all kinds of reasons i can't say what the because is because there's all kinds you know But a lot of it is external forces trying to dictate how you value yourself. Mm -hmm. And if you don't like match up to whatever, like to your, what you were saying about these sort of ideals when it comes to like women and their bodies, but also like the way our lives look and who we love and how much money we make and where we live and, you know, all these, all these other things, Mm -hmm. uh, and because we don't like ourselves very much, we don't take care of ourselves very well. And we are unable to love and take care of others, you yep. know, in a, in a, in a healthy way. Uh, yeah. We j- and yeah, we're just so like devalued and then we just devalue ourselves. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And she gets into some of that a little bit later in the in the next chapter, Be, uh, some of like the sort of s- systemic reasons why we're in right. the way, you know, why we're in the place that we're in. But um, but yeah, I, I really I really enjoyed this. It was so quick because the uh, she doesn't stay very long. You know, they get her to her sisters relatively quickly after she has the baby. But um, so it's quick. But I thought it was really good. Yeah. All right. So um, let's see. I'm trying to jump ahead to the spot where, uh, oh yeah, she, cause this is all her telling the story before the baby is born. Mm-hmm. Um, and then do you mind if I sing no matter how many times she made mistakes or said no or demanded why she would never deserve it. So this is when she says, call me mama Shade," and we get a little break. Um, the new Mama Shade, still unnerved by the crocodile and eager to reach her sister, Effia, would not stay for longer than a day more. So I loaded her and the newest, smallest Shade with food from the kitchen and money from the, from the shrine steps, hired a rickshaw, and delivered mother and baby to a tenement in the academy district. A tearful Effia welcomed them both. They made me promise to return and visit my namesake, and in exchange I swore them to secrecy about the crocodile and his shrine. By the time I left, the sisters were already plotting a new business as weavers of fine scholars' robes. <laughs> um, yeah, oh yeah, and then like, we didn't really touch on this much, but the whole concept of uh, how they they had a business, and he like resented oh. the business mm-hmm. and... Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything that takes women's attention away from their infants. I mean, husbands. (laughs) Uh, So this is when the crocodile tells Sade that she is now a god. And she's like, "Uh, how do you figure? And he says, well, you accepted a sacrifice made to the shrine where you live. And she's like, "Mm mm mm don't live here yet and he just goes right on without listening you performed a miracle on request and you passed on your name what is that if not immortality 
she um, blushes a little bit. She's like, mm-hmm. no, 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 no. <laughs> so she was um, nice to name the baby after me, but it's not the same thing as living forever. I'm going to die just like the newest small shot. will die someday as well. And he comes back and he's like, but she's going to tell her children the story of her birth. And then her children will tell that story to their children and so on and so on until you become Sade, the singer, spirit of the the Lyaso shrine, never to be forgotten. And that is the true divinity of gods. If you had not been here when that woman arrived, I truly do not know what I would have done. We noticed, yes, sir. sir. Right, <laughs> we are aware. <laughs> we are aware. And she's like, "You did a really good job being an errand boy." <laughs> I really do like that. And he does not seem, uh, what's the word I want? Chagrined mm-hmm. at all. Um. So here comes the point. Yep. In the where she com. calls him. <laughs> by his name instead of olga which gets a real like reaction from him and asks him to kiss her and he begins to do so and then stops and i respect this is like i can't do this until i tell you something yeah which of course yeah is always bad news yeah yeah so we had suspected and you called that they would have this moment and that that's when we would find out if he really was behind her losing her voice Mm -hmm. but we find out not only was he behind it but the way in which he pulls it off is he was there at the sin salon this is delightful. I it never really saw was. That coming. I didn't either. I. I mean, like, I knew. I we like we were pretty confident that he was behind it, it by the end. But I did not see this at all, and this was really, really fucking funny. <laughs> it turns out that dude fucking coughing and being like, "What? I didn't hear the instructions. Can you repeat that?" <laughs> that was him in magical disguise the yeah. whole time. Yeah, which is honestly extremely fucking funny it really is even though i do not approve of what he did (laughs) (laughs) i just think that is that is delightful yeah Yeah. if he hadn't actually taken her voice and he had just been there to disrupt it then then i'd be like all right well he tried Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. then it's, it's the fact that he stole her voice from her using magic that makes it like that's the only thing that makes it not a hundred percent just funny yeah you know but it's it's like 90 percent funny (laughs) (laughs) um so yeah she realizes as he he does the transformation right in front of her to show her and she realizes what this means and you know again this is sort of a weird thing because like what he did in trying to control her was not right. What was that? Sorry. <laughs> that sounded crazy. It sounded like you squeezed a mouse. It was a very weird hard thing. Like I was trying to move my headphone, but I'm really close to the mic. So that was like me scratching the outside of the headphone. My nails kind of <laughs> raised against it as I was trying to adjust the headset. Oh, that is funny. My apologies. <laughs> no, it wasn't even that loud. It was just it was just so distinct. And I was like, what could possibly make a noise like that? Um But the like I was I was really torn because taking her choice away was wrong. But what he says about like I could not bear to watch you sing for those monsters and debase yourself and let them use you like that. And like he is right about that just in general about what was going on and that it would have killed her. Mm -hmm. It would have killed her and she was still going to be willing to do it. And we know it would have fucking killed her. Yeah. There's no way. Yeah. Yeah. So I, you know, like it was what he did wasn't right, but also she was not really thinking clearly at the time in going along with it either. So yeah, he was wrong, but also girl, he stopped you from like basically committing a real weird form of suicide. 
Yeah, it's really tough to call because like you don't like to see someone come in and take somebody's um, autonomy away from them. But when they are using their own autonomy to make such a bad choice, yep. you kind of want an intervention, right? This mm-hmm, is that's what mm-hmm. we do when people are 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 engaging in activities that actively harm them uh, for whatever their reasons are. You know, a host of reasons, whether it's something like an addiction or something like a mental ill health issue. You know, you want someone to come in and be like, "Hey." I know you think you are, you've got all your faculties and you're making a reasonable decision, but this is unreasonable what you are engaged in. Mm -hmm. And someone needs to come in and say no. Uh, But she is not taking it like that whatsoever. And she lets him have it. And, And some of what she's saying about his, like she accuses him of, looking down on her and people like her. Mm -hmm. And she says something that's really, really damning. She says, you look down on people like me. You helped lead a revolution for commoners and then refused to live among them. You were given a second chance at life. And instead you chose to hole up in a mansion, hoarding relics of your glory days. All because you would rather be dead and a hero than be alive and be nobody. Which, yeah, that was one that we had not really uh, brought up as like an issue with him. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and now I feel like, oh, yeah, that was really obvious. Huh? <laughs> I should have picked up on that, but I did not. Yeah. And uh, right in the right at the like the the peak of this argument, um, Yang comes in because she had been on her bee hunt. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yes. And she comes in and she's just like, uh, hey guys, <laughs> how are y'all doing? <laughs> and Shada is like, I'm fine. How about you? Did you get your store back? Are they trying to take your store away from you? You shouldn't let them do that. Take things from you that you want. It's not their choice. And she's like, yeah, is this about my store? Or <laughs> she, I love that she actually fucking says that. <laughs> Yeah, you know, like, that's the kind of know. thing that like people usually think, but they don't like say it out loud. But she's mm-hmm. just like, "Are you sure my sh- my shop, my shop, my shop?" <laughs> yeah. So we uh, have our our storming out, um, and I I do like I I, I despite what I said about feeling mixed on his actions because I do believe that she would have died if he hadn't done what he did. I really liked her just basically telling him that he has never given a shit about what she wanted. And that anytime she spoke about anything, he just like waved it off and acted like she was not thinking big enough Mm -hmm. or, you know, and just the idea of like, just the respect that was so profoundly lacking. Mm-hmm. He thinks that he's respecting her by saying that she can be more. Yeah. And he just doesn't understand How the idea. Is. Yeah. Like, and w- when he says like, they were going to use you and she says, well, yeah, you wanted to stop them so that you could use me. Yeah. And I was, oh. I kind of, uh, again, mixed feelings. I was like, yeah, in a way, like she she accuses him of trying to live through her vicariously, mm-hmm. which that hadn't occurred to me either, but makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, but also, yeah, he's but he's right <laughs> in some ways. Though. In some ways, like he was a hundred percent right about that sin salon. Like that, she should not have. Yeah. Been, should not have been doing it. I want to mention too. Somehow, I didn't catch this when i was reading for this episode but in the middle of the argument it says his features sprouted rapidly with scales yeah this is what i was talking about right yeah yeah, yeah. so i know like at the end when i I remember like i paid attention to the part when as they're leaving and she she looks back over her shoulder and he has like started to transform very quickly but i missed that quick little line while they're in the middle of their argument that the Mm -hmm. scales start Mm -hmm. sprouting while they're arguing 
So yeah. that really does make me, that reinforces the idea that like, it's not just the proximity to her, but also like, I don't know. I don't want to say like the, the tone of the relationship between them it also matters. I wonder what's going on with I this. I know. Thing. It's very, very strange. It's it's like her anger. It's almost like the the way that... Okay, this may be... This may be all out there. Oh, let's go. Let's get it. <laughs> so the way that she, she cleans spirit cell, it's always with her singing. Is it possible that when she's feeling more positive and speaking it helps him but when she is hurling accusations and anger at him with the same voice that can clear things up mm. she can accelerate i love that you know, the reason i love that is because she would not know that's a thing she can do because she never lets herself get angry yeah, true. So she would have no evidence really for that. Hmm. That's interesting. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. Like, guys, there's only three chapters left. Yeah. I can't emphasize enough how wild it is to me that we don't know <laughs> basics like this yet. And, I, you know, she may totally pull it off and I might be eating my words next week, but I'm just at this point sort of like, is it possible? Are we, we going to do this? I, I, don't. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Um, so, yeah, so they leave. And as they're leaving, she, like we said, she glances back and she sees that his eyes have turned yellow, doubling in size. They're tilting up to his temples. Talons have emerged from his fingertips. Um, yeah, he's in a bad way. Yeah. It's not good. And she doesn't stop and like kind of, I thought that seeing this would make her sort of stop herself, but she's too angry and she's just like, you know what? I'm out. Yeah. And I she love like Shade, do not put yourself in danger just to spite me. Not everything is about you. I snarled at which his face crumpled with guilt. <laughs> Face crumpling. <laughs> oh man. Um and yeah, she's already stepped over the line by the time she looks back. So even if she wanted to like stay for a second or two longer, she's already initiated the lodestone and being like whisked away. Yeah, but there's no indication that seeing his face transformed makes her wish to turn back. That's true. She doesn't she doesn't think anything like that. Which I was surprised by. I really thought that she'd have kind of been like, ooh, uh, well, mm -hmm. hold on. Let's figure this out for a second. No, she's got a head full of steam. She's angry as fuck. And, uh, and then they go to the shop and, um, well, before they get there, they have to go through the market. And we have a whole scene of, like, you know, people singing for work. Um. And yeah. there's a conversation about, like, why are so many people aging out of the orphan high-rises with nowhere to go? Um, the Ray Bears worked on the, the Lonesome Child Edict for nearly a, a decade. And this is the best they could do. <laughs> and you know they meant well. You know, we know <sighs> Tara Sai and Deo and the rest of them meant really, really. They were doing their, like, trying to do the best they could. And mm -hmm. this is the best they could do. And it's still fucked. Yeah bleak this is the thing about legislation you know like there's there's just there's a reason behind bureaucracy we need checks and balances for things but it there's always going to be shit you don't foresee mm -hmm. loopholes that you didn't really consider yep and ways that people can exploit things that you are just like wow i we didn't think anybody would be that much of a piece of shit yes. are bad you know the, not to not to do the thing where you make things the thing, but I'm gonna do the thing anyway mm. because every like two and a half to three hours, a little voice in my head goes, "Why do we? We don't have anything in place that says you can't be a felon and be president." 
I we didn't write that down anywhere. <laughs> could not believe <laughs> because we went to the trouble of making sure that they couldn't vote. Mm-hmm. I mean, we we put that on paper. We just assumed. <laughs> <laughs> we just really assumed a lot about the the base level kinds of you know and granted there are probably felons out there that would do an amazing job so i'm not even trying to be like you know hashtag not all felons exactly that's my point my point is (laughs) they shouldn't like you know but i'm just saying like we 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 went through the trouble of being like you you specifically cannot vote but just didn't go like another step we were like that's fine (laughs) <laughs> that's enough <laughs> like either do it or don't you know what i'm saying like either either you can vote and you can run or you can't vote and you can't run but how 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 how, how yeah. is it one but not the other <laughs> yeah yeah fully i this is something that i've just been thinking about and it's just i can't there look you know what we don't have to do the whole thing we don't have to do the whole thing we're getting out of here we know people turn it around the closing the door behind (laughs) us um so yeah the she walks by these people who are trying to get work and when they talk about the edict she's like well younger kids it did help but the older ones like we are there's no way to educate us on a trade without spending money so we don't have skills when we leave And the only things we can do are like the lowest level work that nobody fucking wants. And Yun says, don't worry, you won't have to do that work again. Missing the point. Again, yeah. And it's really interesting to me that like Yun understands how shitty certain things Dele says are. But Yun is still capable because she's still at a higher echelon than even Shade owning Mm -hmm. her own business. Mm -hmm. So she just doesn't get it yep. not really yep and then this um, is when small Day starts talking to us and asking us the fucking real questions yeah, yeah. if labor like mine is so crucial to the realm hood then why are workers like me treated so badly and why do we put up with it because if we didn't of course we would end up on the street because there would always be another orphan another desperate hungry soul to take our place so the Lord Liao's and Mama Dele's of the world treat workers however they like, and people become amenities. Mm. Even as I seethed with rage at the crocodile, a line from one of his speeches rang in my ears. In a society, most things happen on purpose. If the wealthy could not survive without menial laborers, I realized, then they would create a world where such workers were always available, always desperate plentiful and ripe for the picking like fruit at a produce stall Mm -hmm. yep 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 what would the world be like if we but nobody wants to work nowadays listen (sighs) i can't i'm not even getting in that either closing that door too (laughs) sorry sorry about it (laughs) but uh yeah what would this world be like if we shaped it instead if we shaped it, meaning like the the small shades of the world. Mm-hmm. Um, so they make it to the shop, and they are expecting to see a disaster area. You know, yeah, a, a gutted out shell of a shop, and instead, they find that the shop is sort of intact. It's uh, been repaired, albeit awkwardly. There are new boards hanging, um, a door rehung crookedly on the hinges, and there on a ladder is Dele working. There she is. Working very hard with a paintbrush and a bucket of varnish. And then she <laughs> slips and, and almost falls off the ladder uh, in a movement so swift it was a blur. Young leapt from the rickshaw and plucked Dele from the air just as she tumbled from the ladder. I thought that was very, very cute yes yeah a little sort of meat cute except that yeah right wrong, it's, but you know it, it really is giving wrong <laughs> um, <laughs> uh so yeah we get caught up to speed on what's been happening at the inn and in town i guess you know since small sade has been at bikina house 
and uh, some things have happened. Yeah, what did this you is think about the reveal hilarious. about Mama Dele? <laughs> <laughs> I had thought about obviously blackmail, but blackmailing him into marrying her. Yeah. That is a stroke of genius. It really is. That is just fantastic. It really is. Like, you hate it for her, like, that she's getting what she wants, but also she's going to have to be married to this miserable piece of shit who's a mm-hmm. represent, you know, reprehensible monster of a man. Uh, so, you know, it's it, it's like she's getting what she wants, but is she? Like, is at, she? What, at what cost? <laughs> yeah. It's really, like, the the two as she says the two of them deserve each other mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and just knowing as well that he looked down on her that everybody was really like looking down on her by the time all of this happened i would love to know what explanation he gives to people because obviously you can't be like oh i didn't want to she blackmailed me into it like you gotta right, right. You have gotta, some kind of yeah. story yeah. Well, what is their fucking little meat cute story? <laughs> I'm just, I can't imagine. Everybody has to have known that he was after her daughter. Like, they gotta know. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure he's probably got quite a reputation, too, of being, uh, I don't want to say a womanizer, because that, that's not is enough for what he does. He's like a predator, you know, of young yes. women. Um, yes. So you know he's not interested in marrying no grown ass woman. That's not his jam at all. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't imagine. Oh, after the sin salon went awry, I went back to to demand compensation, and we had a good talk. And she cried in my arms. And after that moment, I knew I had to take care of her forever. <laughs> I can't imagine. Like, I guess that would have to be it. <laughs> But it's not my problem. It's just very funny. Mm-hmm. I I really, anytime that you have people who wind up in this sort of situation, it is very like, you know, like you said, they're both, well, she, at least, she's getting what she wanted. And that does suck. But it is like a poisoned prize. Mm-hmm. So... I guess what I'm saying is I want one more look at them and I want to see them miserable to feel good about this. Does that make sense? It does. You want to, you want to see it with your own two eyes. You want to see them living in misery. Well, I am. Well, the other thing that's weird too is that they have left town and they live out in a country somewhere, which it seemed very much like Mama Dele was very interested in and in regaining her station so that she can enjoy the perks and privileges of that station in the city, you know, and mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. and lunch with the right people and have tea and be at all the right spots and, you know, know the right families and all that shit. But instead, they are out at some manner in the country where she's not going to get to enjoy a city life of being a woman of means, you know? So I'm wondering, like she got what she want, but also did she, this is what I'm saying. Like, I want to see them. I want to see them being miserable together (laughs) and feel like, okay, good. That's it. That's what I wanted is for neither of them to be satisfied, to have like gotten their monkey's paw wish, (laughs) you know, a little dry. (laughs) <laughs> i'm sorry folks that are listening i can't help myself that's a i don't know if i if don't I, you if dare i have apologize. a if i have a stem that's one of them i can't think of the monkey's paw without that <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah so that's what's going on with with them and uh dele is here putting in the blood, sweat, and tears to bring back Yon's shop mm-hmm. and try to fix things with her own hands. Yeah. And when uh, Dele tells them about Mama Dele leaving and getting married, um, Sade is like, hey, wait a minute. What about the end, though? Because yeah. she immediately thinks of the amenities and, like, did they lose their jobs? Are they out on the streets? Like, what's going on? 
And Zelly is like, oh, eh, the end's mine now. As soon as she got married, she lost everything that belonged to the Balaguns, and it all comes to me. I'll probably sell it, and then I'll be free of all of this. Completely not thinking about the amenities at all. Nope. And Sade thinks to herself, I should be quiet. I sh- this is not even my like conversation to be in. You know, I'm just like a third wheel here. But instead of being quiet, she just fucking keeps talking. <laughs> she goes for it. This is great. It I was, was so proud of her. Yeah. And so she's like, uh, you're still going to have the money from the, the sale of the inn. You're going to have the money that your family made off of the workers. This is no different. If you really want to be free, give the end to the amenities instead of selling it. They ran it while your mother collected the profits, just like the miners who worked that quarry when it should have been theirs all along. And, uh... Seize the means! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then yep. she just starts to leave. <laughs> I love it. She turns and just walks away and... <laughs> Ian has to go after her and be like, um, where are you going, girl? <laughs> and she really, I think that Yoon really is like, where are you going in a sort of jokey way? Because she thinks that Shade just did this like walk away for the drama. Mm-hmm. But we know that Shade fully intends to just find somewhere to sleep tonight. Yep. Like this was not a, a posturing at all. This is her leaving behind this situation Mm -hmm. and it's just a really like the moment where you know yun is sort of like joking around because she doesn't understand still she doesn't get it the the situation that shade is in versus the ways that she has survived yep you know and she has to tell her look first of all Young is like, uh, you're not in any good shape to go back to Bikini House because you're so mad. And Chade is like, I, that, um, what? That, mm-hmm. that wasn't going to. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, please get with the program. <laughs> like these people are just like, they don't get her. No, like at all. Um, in a real way. Um. Which I guess, too, is actually part of the story, right? Like, they have an idea of who they think she is, and they just run with it, despite whatever evidence is actually in their face of who she is, you know? They just have this idea of her, um, which makes them do and say things that are wildly insulting and dismissive and condescending, and they don't hear themselves, um, but she's like, yeah, don't worry about me. I'll get a new job. Just like I did the last time. There's always something that needs to be clean. There's always floors to be scrubbed and dishes to rinse off. But as Shade is saying that she realizes something about herself that's changed. Yeah. And she says, but I knew it would not be the same as before. It wasn't that the labor scared me being a maid had always filled me with purpose. I love this too. She says, cleaning was so necessary. Whether you live as a prince or a pauper, the work seemed almost sacred. I love that. She yeah, says, I agree. but I knew my job was sacred, but the people who hired me would not. I was still suited to labor, but no longer it seemed to servanthood. That's a whole word. Such a distinction. I love it so it's much. It's so good. It's so fucking good. Yeah. And that's the thing for real life too, right? Like when nobody Mm -hmm. wants to work anymore. Like, no, it's not that. But people want to be treated with a certain amount of dignity while they're doing the work. Just because, you know, you deem their job to be, you know, unskilled labor, TM, you (laughs) know, doesn't mean you get to treat people like shit. Um, But that's in fact exactly what it means. That's how we behave. Yeah, it's really, um, this is something that has come up for me before with like, talking about a world where we were given a universal basic income and didn't like have to have jobs. And people will say things like, well, you know, then such and such would never get done because nobody wants to do that. And I have to disagree. There are so many people that 
get a lot of fulfillment out of jobs that I might find tedious mm -hmm. or horrible. And I'm doing something that they would fucking not want to do either. The world is filled with different types of people and it just sure trying to be is. like, well, then things wouldn't get done because why would anybody do it if they weren't made to do it? I just mm -hmm. utterly reject that. Yep. It's such nonsense. It's absolute it's nonsense. Like uh, my mom, for instance, who, when she was trying to go back to work, which was way too soon, but she wanted to get back to work as soon as she could after she you know, was sick. And one of the things she was telling me was that she has always been a person who believes in acts of service. So when I look back over my mom's working career, she's always been in like customer service industry. You know, she, mm -hmm. she was a waitress for a really long time and, you know, her job now, part-time job, she's a cashier and she fucking loves that job. Is it like an important job, you know, air quotes, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Is it a, a uh, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's one of those jobs that people hand wave and like, nobody would be a cashier if they had big universal basic income. Who would, who would, who would man our registers? Mm -hmm. Lots of fucking people. It's like, yeah, they would. might not do it 40 hours a week like we require, but maybe we wouldn't need mm -hmm. a 40 hour a week cashier yep. like me the it's just people lack imagination <laughs> you know and they just really can't conceive of a world that is structured totally differently yep and i understand that to a point but it does sort of it just it, it's just so self-absorbed in a way of just like yeah well just because you wouldn't yeah you know somebody was saying the other day about like well natasha if you like one million dollars uh, these days it would better be more than that but yeah. you know let's say what would you do and i was like honestly i would keep doing this i like doing this i wouldn't stop doing this i might do it less frequently i wouldn't push myself to record so many times a week but i'd probably still keep doing it this is fun and fulfilling and i'm doing it i'm a lucky person in that i get to do something that i actually love and care about and that isn't necessarily tied to money every time. Mm -hmm. And even though it's hard for me to conceive of, there are people out there who like to add numbers together. Listen, we're all fun. friends here, right? <laughs> we're all friends. So I'm one of those people that make UBI look bad. Because I would be you do nothing. I be, would be doing shit. <laughs> and maybe we wouldn't need you to. You I'm, know, but I say that jokingly, but the reality is if I had room and time to breathe, maybe I would find the thing that I would yeah. like to do, mm -hmm. but I haven't been, you know, but there's, you know, for the way my life worked out, there really was, you know, I didn't get an opportunity to figure out what the fuck I wanted to do. Yeah. Um, so. But yeah, so when I first think about that, I'm just like, shit, I would fucking not do anything. And I might not the first couple of months, but eventually I would find a use for myself. You know, mm -hmm. I'd find something to do because most of us that are able, you know, want to find something that fulfills us and that contributes to the world around us, you know? Yeah. And it can just, like you said, there's very little imagination. There's all kinds of things that need to be done that, you know, we, that we casually say, Oh, well, that's a volunteer opportunity and, you know, fit that mm -hmm. in on your weekends. Well, maybe that would just be what I did. Yeah. With my time. <laughs> Speaking as somebody who has been unemployed for stretches, I, always wound up in positions that I was volunteering every day somewhere and I was not getting paid for it, but I got bored. I didn't want to just be at home. I wanted to do something. I have skills. I'm smart. And I wound up volunteering for like an at risk youth after school center or with like dog walking when I was in Philly and you know, for the shelter um, and it, you know, I, I was content to do nothing for a little bit, 
And then you start to get a little bit stir crazy Mm -hmm. and you just want to be out in the world. And if the only things that you can do out in the world are go shopping or out to eat and spend money that you don't have, you got to find another thing to do. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I'm just trying to think. I don't think I have had a long period of unemployment since I was a teenager. Yeah. One of them was when I got laid off from that fucking place. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've always, I think, I think the, the the longest since I've been an adult that I didn't, nope. I worked part-time when I was in school. I was going to say was when I went back to school, but I I worked, I was waiting tables part-time when I was doing that. Mm. Um, yeah, no, I've never had like, Yeah, I can't think of a single, I can't think of any time in my life where I didn't work. I've always, always worked. Like, no shade to anybody who's, like, been unemployed. Like, I'm, that shit is looming on my horizon. But, um, but, yeah, in my, I just never, I've never had any time. It's always been, yeah. Yeah. I never had, like, anybody else to be like, oh, well, no, I just, I got us. I got us while you're, like, you know unemployed mm-hmm. for x amount of months that's just never been the case Bitch, yeah both those times him. i was married to brendan and yeah. he was making decent money so yeah no we were okay for a little while a very little while <laughs> nevertheless <laughs> um so uh she when she says that line about uh still suited to labor but no longer suited to servanthood and Young is listening listening to this, and she says, you don't have to tell me exactly what happened, um, but you can stay at the shop with us, you know. You're more than yeah. welcome to stay at the room over the shop. And, she, and Shade ends up being like, well, I'll just sleep downstairs, and you guys can have the upstairs. Um, and so they all go upstairs to bed, and, and small Shade is making herself comfortable in the flower shop. And she gets a she gets a visitor. <laughs> oh, bless him! I I'm love it. <laughs> the way that she says it in the book is so cute. I love it so much. Oh, and uh, he's out there banging. He was just banging on the door. I was like, how is he? How is how is he banging on the door? <laughs> yeah, I could not. I could not. I forgot about the gourds that fast. I could not imagine what was happening here. But he's oh now, oh okay. yeah because because there's a there's, she sees his little shape right. Um, mm-hmm. But there's a thumping sound, and I was like, what? How is he making that noise? I know it's him, but what is thumping? What is he doing? <laughs> But yeah, he's trying to, to creep under the door and he's got this gourd tied to his tail that's a little bit too big to get through the crack that he's coming through until eventually he ma- he manages to like break it through. And yeah, she's looking at this thing and it's, it's, a, it's a little bitty gourd and she's like, Crocodile loves the sound of his own voice so much. Mm-hmm. I can't imagine what this little tiny message is because this dude likes to talk (laughs) i really love that as being like that otherwise she wouldn't even open it Mm -hmm. but just because it's this small she's just like well now i gotta know what he put in there and um i love this she says that uh you know she's feeling very certain that there was nothing he could say there's no apology no speech from his velvet tongue could convince her to ever see his face again but she opens it and it's only two words. Don't come. And immediately she's like, you don't tell me what to do. I swear <laughs> to God. I love it so much. Yeah. And it ends. With- I feel like I walk around with that exact energy all the <laughs> you time. You really do. <laughs> <laughs> to my detriment occasionally. Maybe more than occasionally. Only occasionally. Be nice to yourself. Be generous. Only occasionally. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so yeah, she goes marching back to the shrine. How dare he tell me not not to come? Not the boss of me. 
So I can't wait to see what the fuck is going to happen because I cannot, I can't picture anything that's going to make sense for these little three chapters that we have left. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's really like uh, there's so much left to explain there. And, and you know what? Like, it's possible that even if she meant this to be a standalone story, that she won't explain everything. Mm. We did end the last trilogy and we didn't like really know what happened to Crocodile. We heard that he died, but we never found a body. And it was just sort of like this dangling thread. That's so she true. may do that here and leave herself room for something else yeah, in the future, she, even if she doesn't have plans for it now. If she's building a whole universe with all these different characters, we might get another book that's, you know, picking up the thread of the story, but just from someone else's POV yeah. that, we've, that we've met here, you know? Um, I don't know how satisfied I would be if it ends like really really open ended that way like i want i'm i'm okay with it not being completely answered but there are some things that i need, i would hope that we get a resolution to i mm. want the tapestry address because i feel like that's a big plot point to leave hanging yeah and i would very much like to to know what happens with crocodile as far as his transformation goes, whether he completely transforms and ends up back at the swamp with, um, what is it? Ixalix? Yeah. Um, cause that could end up being a story of its own, right? It if, sure could. If he ends up doing that. But I, 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 I need either for him to turn completely and, and it ends there. And then maybe that's a story that she tells later or he is cured per the prophecy on the tapestry mm -hmm. um the rest of the stuff like the things with the amenities could be open-ended um what else would i be okay with being sort of open-ended i don't necessarily need small shade's story to wrap up tidily like that can be a little open-ended like where she goes next what she's going to do with herself that kind of stuff mm -hmm. um I think, yeah, I think I agree. Yeah, those are the two things though that I, I would I would like to see some sort of like conclusion to. Or or if not a solid conclusion, at least give me some answers so that I can hold on to them until you get the next book out. Yeah, right. I wonder if she is gonna write it. Because like, you know, she she's just I think playing it kind of close to the chest because she doesn't want the pressure mm -hmm. of people waiting for another book, which I completely understand and would probably also handle that way. Um, but and didn't she have some difficulties getting this book out? Like the, the, there was like a time constraint or like she ran into something. I forget. We talked about it at the beginning, but now it's the second I book forget. of the Ray bear books that it's she had a really hard time with. Oh, okay. Cause she was able to take her time with the first book and then they wanted a second book like pronto after the first one was so successful. Oh, I'm trying to think now. I feel like she said something in the opening in her little forward or her thank you, but I could just be imagining. Nope. There's no forward or no thank you. What the fuck? Well, I just made that completely up. <laughs> there's something about you just being like there's no thank you there's just no thank you really sound like you got personally <laughs> left off like somebody's <laughs> academy award list okay there's an acknowledgement at the very end of the book uh is that it that's what i was thinking of but did uh, you read the acknowledgement at the end already i think i may have how is that what you were thinking of if you, we haven't gotten there yet because it's always at the end of the book. It's not like a, it's just like an acknowledgement to thanking people. I always read that stuff. You shouldn't read that until the end. You don't know that there's not spoilers in there. Why would you? It's at the end for a reason. Oh. It's at the end for a reason. The way she just went, oh. oh my God. <laughs> I. 
<laughs> literally never <laughs> thought for a second that there could be spoilers in here. I'm just like, oh, they put it at the. Sometimes they put it at the beginning. Sometimes they put it at the end. <laughs> My God. <laughs> My bad, y'all. My bad. <laughs> Oh, you dink. I am. I am a dink. World class dink. <laughs> um, all right. Well, I guess that's everything for this episode. I'm gonna try I'm I'm attempting to stop using the other like I used to use Airtable uh for a lot of things, you know? Mm-hmm. And I've just like kind of i'm over it with air table going to a website i'm starting to use like apple notes app for everything pretty much and uh so but i'm not used to it yet so i'm like wanting to say hi to new patrons and i don't have everything pulled over to the app yet so i'm, I'm just opening it up like yeah let me say hi to do oh that's not here hold on <laughs> just have to get myself back on track with it um let's see Okay, so since the last time that I said hi to patrons, we have got Z, Dorian Koff, Amelia, Mike Truck, Bonnie Oppenheimer, That Geek Evan, and Moko all just became patrons this past week. So welcome to all of you. Thank you all so much. Appreciate you a lot. I hope that those of you who are, uh, you know, getting access to the patrons only content that you are enjoying it. Um, and I also wanted to give everybody a heads up that uh, Rashawn and I have started our coverage of Supernatural. And Rashawn really didn't want to cover. And nobody wanted us to cover it. And then they all switched up. That's because I sounded so excited and they just want to hear me be horrified. <laughs> Rashawn really didn't want to cover season one, episode eight, which she has described to me as being universally seen by fans and actors and people involved in the show as the worst episode they have ever made. Now, allegedly, <laughs> I've watched up to season two, episode one six of this show according to netflix when you log according in according <laughs> to netflix i remember none of it i cannot speak to the veracity of this claim but that's what they say and i don't remember anything about like the last episodes we've covered they have been like brand new to me so i don't know what it is but Rashawn didn't want to cover episode eight i, I didn't want to skip anything and she was still trying to convince me to skip just that one and the more she insisted it was terrible and we should skip it, the more I was like, nope, I have to see it now. And initially she was like, you can see it on your own time. <laughs> Do not involve me. I tried but so I could hard. not accept it. I tried so hard. <laughs> so now what we are doing is the Y'all, most. When she actually. tested me this. So what we're doing is we're going to on <laughs> on Friday, October 18th at 5.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. We're going to be doing a live watch of the episode on Crowdcast. It's going to I'm going to share my tab that's playing it in Netflix and we'll all watch it together. And that is going to be available for everybody to come and join us while we watch it and then after that gonna i gave us like enough time for like a 20 minute break we will start the live recording and that is going to be for patrons one dollar and up to come to and they can hang out in the chat while we talk about this legendarily bad episode that i am super excited about so uh that's what's going on there I have not rewatched this episode ever. I've seen it and then decided I never wanted to see it again. So whenever I do my rewatches, I skip it like a normal person would. And now I don't even remember how bad it was. 
I just remember that I didn't want to ever see it again. <laughs> so I'm really curious how much I'm going to be able to watch and if it's even as bad as I remember it being. But I'm not looking forward to it. I mean, I'm looking forward to hanging out with you guys. But, ugh. <laughs> I'm so excited, y'all. I feel Truly. like you might be let down. You might be like, oh, it's not even that bad. It's not about the episode. It's about you. <laughs> it's about the listeners who are excited to see uh, our, our the moments of me like, you know, oh my God, is this really what we're doing? And you probably at one point being like, see, I told you. You can't blame me. <laughs> I, I said I didn't want to do this. So, you know, this this. There's just a, an experience here. The fact that Rashawn tried to get me to skip it by saying everybody in the spoiler channel agreed without even a question that we should skip that one. I can't be covering a property and not get to be part of the experience of knowing why everybody instantly <laughs> agrees we can skip something. That's part of it. When you were watching it live as it aired, did you know this episode's about to be shit and so we'll just skip it? No. That you went is ahead fair. and watched it. That's fair. You're right about that. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I want the experience. Uh, I think it's really funny. Like, I'm curious now. Like, well, I don't want, we'll talk about Supernatural on a Supernatural podcast. Join us over mm. there for that kind of conversation. <laughs> Look at that. What a lovely little se sell. A very good segue. Um, all right, guys. Well, thank you all so much for listening. I hope that you guys can come and join us for that. I can't believe we're going to be finishing this up next week. You want to start the Dresden Files show after this? We've been talking about it. Oh, that's right. <laughs> it's such a weird thing because Supernatural, I have to imagine has like a lot of similar vibes so covering both of them together is that like is that too many of the same vibe I, I, yeah i yeah i don't know now that we're doing supernatural it feels like we don't need to do the dresden files tv show but the point of it was to like refresh ourselves because the book is gonna the next book is coming yeah but you'll have to ah. watch some of those and let me know what you think you'll have to go back i've watched them all no that's what i mean I, like like i don't know how long it's how long it's been if you need to refresh or yeah whatever. it has been a minute you know, and let me know if you think we should if we should still do it um you could also just... do uh some of the dresden comic books instead to refresh ourselves but i've never like i've covered a comic only a couple times and it can be a little tricky um yeah, and I've you never know. done any comics with you. You always did those with other people. Yeah. Well, we'll have to figure it out. Yeah. If you guys have suggestions for things to cover after this, feel free to let me know. I may ignore them, but you're free to tell me. Mm -hmm. Don't let All right, until suggesting. next time, everybody. <laughs> Toodaloo, motherfuckers. Bye, guys. <laughs> Spoiled Network Podcast.